Devon Fergus O'Connor, Berries Creek, South Gippsland. We run a steer operation on our farm. It's like this every day too. It's called Subtropical Gippsland. And we absolutely love it. Welcome to our farm. We moved from the Mornington Peninsula seven years ago um, and bought this 150 acres, predominantly on the red ferrosol soil. Uh, not as a retirement plan at all, but as a plan to extend ourselves because the peninsula had got so built up. And we run this operation on the farm now where we have 150 steers, usually on a 150 acres. Everything on the property stays on the property. All the hay and silage is made on the property. The only thing that leaves the property is the finished steers. Uh, the steers now go to Greenham's and most of our meat is exported to America because they can't get grass-fed beef over there. Uh, we draft them off um, around about 550 kilos. They go straight to Greenham's abattoir and that night we have a check in the, the money in the bank, which is just fantastic. And they're all MSA graded when they're there and we're right at the top of the MSA grading with their grading system in Australia. There are about 15 graded systems with the MLA grading. For us, because hopefully we're buying the right sort of stock, what we try and manage is to keep them calm and to keep them stress-free and looking really good. So when we send them to Greenham's, we don't actually have a problem with the grading system because the basic fact of the matter is the less stress you put on the animal, the better the meat is. And it's so simple to keep them in their own little groups, keep them happy, keep them well fed and look after them. And that's what we do. We looked at lots and lots of properties and when we saw this property, we knew it was actually a fantastic property. At the time, it was completely covered in blackberry, Californian thistle and wild radish. And it's taken us all this time, working all the time to rid it of that. We could tell the pasture had been put down properly had been let go because it was used as an out paddock and it's just an ongoing every year, every spring, every autumn attacking the weeds and we've done pretty well. We have a paddock over there which we actually call the blackberry paddock still because it had a patch of blackberries in it that was four acres and there are still blackberries coming up in different places but we've mostly got the weeds under control and because we've done that, we've been able to increase our production every year. So we're really pleased with that. Okay, so you've got a door just open. It's just the door on, on Clive just opened by itself <laughs> as you were talking. Like, there was no one there. I thought, I thought a cow got in. I just saw a mover. I thought, oh, that's great. We buy the steers as little fellas in markets from Hayfield, Coonwarra, Pakenham, anything like that. We're thinking of going even further now with the price of cattle, especially with the young ones, how it's gone crazy. People ask me, how do I buy them? Well, I actually buy them on type, what I feel they'll grow into and how much I can pay for them. Because there's no point paying enormous money when you're not gonna make any money. Predominantly we buy Angus, they were very suited to the restaurant trade. We also buy Herefords and we buy Black Baldies and they all seem to do the job pretty well and we look after them well. Something that's hugely important to us on this property is we have a brilliant spring that we've had tested and the water quality is the highest underground quality of water you can possibly get. When we got here, the cattle were allowed in the spring line and they were allowed in the dam. The water was so putrid, it was dangerous to drink. So we fenced off 
all the spring lines. We've now got pump water, clean spring water to all the paddocks and all our troughs have actually got goldfish in to keep them clean as well. And our water now pumped through the property is absolutely pristine and it's, you can drink it everywhere. It's absolutely brilliant. So why would you let your cattle drink filthy water? And they tell me that you can get as much as 20% increase in your production from clean water. So it's well worth doing. Before we bought the property, we had extensive soil tests done on the property as it had been used as a potato farm 30 years prior. Fortunately for us, there were no residues found on the property whatsoever. Since we've had the property, we have soil tests done regularly. We've been on Peter's Grasfurt program and we have our own soil tests done as well. Most of the property is absolutely brilliant and doesn't need anything done to it. We have one paddock which we call the middle paddock that was deficient in a few things on Peter's Grasfurt and that has now reached the end of its three year cycle that we treated it with Corumbara Lime and Super doing the work. But this paddock for example has had nothing done to it and will continue to have nothing done to it because if you do anything it's a waste of money. My neighbour is very keen on putting lime on and tells me off all the time for not liming my property. And I say to him, have you had a soil test done? And he says, no, I don't believe in those. I said, well, my soil across the property is, has a pH of 6.4, so it's a waste of time putting lime on. Not only a waste of time, it's a waste of money. <laughs> so soil tests have been integral to our management of the farm and we've actually learnt a lot about them. At the end of last financial year, the accountant rang up Deb and said, I want to see Fergus. So I thought, oh goodness, what on earth's going on? So I went in there with Deb and we sat down and he looked at me and he said, um, we can't work out what's going on in this office. What's going on on your farm? He said, everybody else is spending a fortune on fertilizers and you hardly spend anything. But every year you've been on the farm, your production's gone up. So what are you doing? And we said to him, it's very simple. You get soil tests and you find out what your soil needs. So there's no point spending money on fertilizers and lime and all this other stuff if you haven't had your soil test done in the first place and I think it's very important. And when we explained it to him, he said, I can't believe all these other people are wasting all their money. I said, well, they might not be wasting their money. It might be what they needed, but who knows? Unless they've had a soil test done across the farm, they won't know. And it's as simple as that. We're very keen on trees and we love trees. This is the spring line that runs from the spring right through the property, through two dams and out the other side, eventually goes into the Toomey Creek, which then flows into the Tarwin River. If you ever need any evidence that trees are a good thing, there was a gale here a fortnight ago. My neighbor's cattle were standing in the corner of a paddock with barbed wire around them, freezing. My cattle, in the lure of the trees were eating the grass, as happy as anything and warm. What more can you say? You cannot put a value on a tree. And we've planted, as I say, 17,000 so far, and we've got another 600 to put in this spring. And we keep planting and planting and planting. And you can plant enormous areas of your property and you actually don't lose production because the cattle are kept warm and healthy in the, in the winter and they're kept cool in, in the summer. So the benefits are just extraordinary. Since we've planted this spring line in particular, the crayfish have come back that build the chimneys, the frogs have all come back, 
people haven't heard frogs like it for 40 years around here and they're all they've all come back and it's absolutely brilliant all the bird life's come back and it's just so much nicer you have to put yourself in the position of the cattle and think would I like to stand in the middle of a paddock on either a baking day of 40 degrees with no shade the other side of that is would I like to stand in the paddock on a freezing cold day when it's blowing a gale the answer is no go and stand behind a tree and you're happy and it's as simple as that and I just I cannot understand why people don't plant more trees. That tree is over 250 years old. Its girth is about 30 feet. And to think that that tree was a really big mature tree well before any white man came near the place, you'd like to be able to talk to it. Well, I do talk to it and it could answer you back as to what went on here in the past when this was all subtropical forest or whatever it was at the time, wet forest I should say. So the story that a tree like that could tell would be extraordinary. This is actually a land care plantation uh, specifically for koalas that we planted six years ago. And interestingly, while I was actually planting it just over there, I heard this noise behind me and I looked behind me and there was this great big male koala just sitting there watching me plant, which I thought was absolutely brilliant, just inspecting what was going to happen in the future. Mm -hmm.